สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ So have you all? Uh, hope, hope you all had a great lunch. So welcome back again to the afternoon session of the last day of our Bangkok FinTech Fair 2018. Uh, we're going to have three more sessions left. It's going to be about digital identity, digital banking, and the last session will be conducted in Thai regarding FinTech ecosystem. ครับสำหรับงานเสวนาในช่วงบ่ายนะครับยังคงต่อเนื่องครับและเข้มข้นเกี่ยวกับนวัตกรรมทางการเงินรวมไปถึงโครงสร้างพื้นฐานทางการเงินครับโดยในงานเสวนาต่อไปนะครับเราจะกล่าวถึงการพัฒนาระบบดิจิตอลไอดีนิตี้ครับหรือว่า EKYC ที่เรารู้จักกันนะครับซึ่งถือเป็นเรื่องสําคัญแล้วก็เป็นเสมือนจุดเริ่มต้นของการทําธุรกรรมด้านดิจิตอลครับ So unsurprisingly all sessions so far mentioned about how to onboard customers and be compliant with the regulations AML CFT KYC CD and all that stuff so the session this session would give you some thoughts about it It's going to be about the digital identity and EKYC, setting the foundation for digital businesses. We get great honor from the director of government relations, Southeast Asia of Visa, to be our moderator for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Daniel Wu. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back from the break. I heard we had a good lunch. For the, this today's session, when I heard that I was given the opportunity to speak about this subject on digital identity, I thought to myself, "This is perfect." I've lived in Thailand for four years, and one of the things that has always struck me about Thailand is the topic of inclusion. When we talk about digital identity, it starts with digital identity, but it ends with inclusion. And that's the kind of community that we're trying to build. Already, we already know, ID verification is the heart of financial services. Many financial institutions are already doing this. As we know, an identity is your gateway into formal services. If we want to create this gateway for greater economic, financial, community inclusion, we need to start thinking about how do we better manage identity in the digital economy. Already, we heard day one. We're having a digital economy. The increasing digital service providers who are trying to fundamentally provide a digital service, but yet are faced with physical constraints. Moving from the offline to the off online to the offline world, there's a gap. But digital identity could actually give us the framework in order for us to become a true digital economy here in Thailand. Today, I'm really, really honored to introduce. Our panel, and our panelists, it's really important to keep in mind where they actually come from. When we think about digital identity, we not just need ideas; we need a framework, we need a team, we need collaboration, and we need execution. These are the people on today's panel that represent that broad spectrum of idea to reality. So, without further ado, I'm extremely honored to introduce today's panel. We have Kun Silawat from Kasipon Bank. Kendrick from GovTech. Edmund from EKYC Chain. And Dr. Anushit from Kiat Nakin Bank. Gentlemen, Thanks for joining us today. You've come from quite far away. In the case of Kendrick, all the way from Singapore. Really appreciate your time here. You guys took time of your busy day, so let's go ahead and get started. Already, we talked about the importance of digital identity, but what does digital identity really mean? I think it's important to consider the bigger picture. It's about building a foundation, and when to think about building a foundation, I really can't think of anyone else than Dr. Anuchit. Who has been involved in developing a lot of the infrastructure behind the digital economy of Thailand? So it's a huge pleasure to have you here, to Dr. Anuchit. So we already know, beginning last year, Thailand has already embarked on a project to think about 
digital identity and what it could look like for the country. We'd love to hear from you. What is the bigger picture behind this particular project? What is Thailand Digital Identity? I think the audience would love to hear about it. If you look at the bigger picture, um, uh, people usually talk about uh, the applications and, and, uh, and uh, new technology and uh, a lot of things. But what we really need for a country to move forward is to build the infrastructure to support all this kind of development. And uh, I have identified that there are uh, f at least, I think, uh, five big infrastructures that we have to, to build to support the development of uh, fintech and, and other uh, technology-related applications. Um, and one of the things that, that uh, the Bank of Thailand is heavily involved with is the uh, development of pay e electronic e-payment, e financial e-payment that we have already started as doing the process. And uh, digital ID is the second infrastructure among the five. And uh, we have just started talking about this uh, since last year. Um, if you go back a little bit more, uh, there, are, in the past few years, there are a lot of initiatives, uh, a lot of projects that's going on at the same time. The government themselves uh, is trying to improve the ease of doing business index and uh, set up a project of uh, trying to solve this ease of doing business. And um, after a while, uh, the project ran into this challenge of how to how to be inclusive, how to get people to utilize all those uh, new services that are going to be available online. When they, when they are not online at all, they don't know how, who they are and how they're going to apply, how, how can we verify that is that the, the actual person that is doing uh, that transaction. And at the same time, uh, the, uh, the, uh, on the private sector, there are, also, uh, there are a lot of projects, similar projects, and trying to help each other cross verify and so on, so on and so forth, and that's that's how uh, uh, this project got started because of there are two, so many projects, similar projects, but they got separated, and we we get together all the people who are involved with all th all these various projects and trying to set up a common infrastructure. So so um to make the audience understand the the, the basic concept of this is which I think the other panelists may be able to uh, explain it in more details, but uh, in short, uh, without any digital ID infrastructure, all the onboarding process that we people have been talking about would be limited to f only face-to-face -face, uh, onboarding process. So that limit, uh, a country like us, which we have, uh, it's, a, it's a big country, not, 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 not uh, uh, just, just a small country with a few people and where you can just walk to a, a nearby a kiosk and doing something. It's a, it's a huge country. We have so many projects that, that require people to, to present themselves. And, and if, if we are limited to only face-to-face -face, uh, onboarding process, uh, not only the government services, but also all the fintech development would, would face this obstacle of uh, growing into any significant critical mass. And uh, so we've, we definitely need some way to uh, be able to onboard a, a, a new customer or a new um, a user uh, using some means of non-face-to-face -face, uh, through some kind of channel. And we come up with an idea that uh, since we already have uh, people using other kinds of IDs, uh, they are already, for example, we have more than 30 million people who are using mobile, f uh, mobile banking on a, on a daily basis. Then how can we use those existing IDs so that uh, when someone wants to apply or utilize a service, then they, can then they can rely on the other party to verify that person for themselves, for, for, for that service provider. By, by doing so, it, it kind of speed up uh, the the whole uh, onboarding process, and uh, with with that idea in mind, we gather uh, parties from the government side and the uh, business sector. They all we all come together and and trying to organize uh, an effort to build uh, the 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 green piece in the middle, which is the what we call the digital ID platform, which uh, connects everybody together to make sure that. Uh, one party can identify 
a, a, a user for the other party and uh, speed up the onboarding process. Another, another, another I, think, I think this question will come up some, some, uh, some time later that, uh, so what kind of authentication we are, whether we are using biometrics, are we throwing away the, the uh, national ID card? Are we building a new kind of digital ID? No, that is uh, a, a misunderstanding of what we call a, an infrastructure. What we are trying to build as an infrastructure is, is something that is uh, technology neutral. That, me that means that any kinds of new technology, facial recognition, fingerprint, or whatever that's going to be developed in, in the future, or is, whether it's available right now, can be used as an, an, another an authentication method. It's, it's a, um, uh, analogy, analogy is that we, we are trying to build a connection between parties, but each party that is in the ecosystem uh, can innovate, can have their own choice of, of uh, technology uh, to participate into this infrastructure. And that's a uh, very <coughs> important design concept that we have because uh, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we need an infrastructure that would make sure that whatever uh, te new technology that's going to be developed, we uh, can still use the same infrastructure to interconnect everybody and move the whole society along together. And, uh, the, and the new and old, infrastructure, uh, old technology can also coexist at the same time. Um, in terms of governance, we, uh, the, 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 the finance minister and the minister of, of uh, digital economy uh, has set up a working committee which comprised of uh, people from the business sector uh, who, who came from various industries and uh, the regulator and also representative of government agency. Uh, to, to work on this uh, working committee uh, that drives the uh, project on national ID. So I'll, 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 I'll introduce this uh, and then uh, yeah, we can talk it uh, later on. Okay. Thank you very much. If I may ask a follow-up question to this, when it comes to infrastructure, it makes sense you know, for us who are involved in the business sector to build on top of that infrastructure, but at some point, you know, it's delivery to the market, right? And when it comes to digital economy, one thing I think government and industry are working on is trust in the digital economy. How would you communicate to the market how they can trust this digital identity system? I think trust uh, come from uh, very, uh, there are many aspects of trust. Okay. By getting everybody who is, who, who every stakeholders to work together on, on a project, that, that's also uh, the process that creates trust in itself. Because, uh, I mean, you would not be happy if, if it is a black box which someone built for you and you don't have a, any, anything to do with it at all. It's just, it's just put there and, and force you to use it. Right? But we, we just make sure that all the parties, government side and business sectors and when I, when I talk about business sector, I mean people from, from various industries who represent uh, each corner of the game, and, and they, they come together, contribute, debate, and come to the same conclusion, and, 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 and hold hand uh, together to, to build a common infrastructure. That, that's a key to trust. And, and um, trust may also mean other things, like. Uh, technical uh, capability, uh, security, and, and, uh, and, and other things. I mean, people may, may question whether this is going to be a right solution and whether it's going to withstand any cyber attacks, things like that. But having all of the design and everything in public, is this an open development? Make sure that it gets scrutinized. There are so many eyes that look into it. Every, everybody help each other uh, looking through whether there's any loopholes, anything that, is, that's, that somebody may, may, may not think of. That's, that's how we get the, 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 the trust 
into into the it has to be in the process of building it. Okay. And I think I think this is probably the first project in Thai history that we can get so many people to work together. And uh, and uh, at the working team that that uh, that I showed you earlier, um, they are all volunteers. They not get paid for it. They are volunteers that come from from various bank, various industry, work together, contribute their their time, uh, writing papers, put it into publics, thing, thing, things like that. That that that's the first thing that that ever happened in in in, in this country. Uh, we we set up a, a company called National uh, ID. Uh, and there are more than 50 companies who hold chairs in that company. This is a, a representation of, of an effort of the whole community, the whole country to build this. Dr. Anuchit, thank you so much. Kun Silawat, already from Kasikon Bank, we've always heard literature coming out across the industry that financial institutions are well prepared and actually most ready to adopt digital identity as part of their BAU processes. So we'd love to hear from you. What does digital identity mean for you from a Thai banking perspective? And what does it look like for the banking system? Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, to invite me here. Uh, for myself, uh, I also uh, a member in the uh, pilot use case uh, working committee, which is uh, uh, comprised of uh, all the industries working together, include, uh, for example, banking, insurance, uh, security, uh, all the regulators related, uh, uh, BOT, SEC, for example, and uh, other uh, government agency. Uh, it's about 50. Uh, people, I, I don't mean that the, uh, the high number mean good, right? but I try to support the, uh, Dr. Nushit said that uh, what we try to do is we gonna build a platform for our country. Okay, uh, to apply uh, for the, uh, the national digital ID, I would like to uh, use the sample case of uh, uh, bank open uh, opening account. Uh, currently, uh, the the slide show uh, today what we have uh, to do on the open the account is start with the uh, KYC and uh, together with the account opening process. And after that, uh, we have the financial uh, transaction what we have done at the branch. Or even in the below is the some kind of the uh, other services. Actually, if we looking in terms of the numbers, uh, not just only the uh, uh, bank account opening, but within the bank we have, I think, thousand of thousand kinds of services uh, in. Uh, digital or is the non-digital as well. Uh, just uh, looking into the, uh, what we try to do in, in every bank is on the, we want to go for the digital. But before onboard to digital, for example, uh, for the K Plus, which is uh, our mobile banking today, we have uh, 8 million right now for the, for the K Plus, which is our mobile banking. Uh, all of them have done in terms of the hybrid. W what I try to say is on the uh, using the account opening uh, as a paper, we need to sign the wet ink, and after that, we, we uh, authenticate using the, the debit card through the ATM. What it means that uh, I so call it hybrid, but that means that the one who want to use need to go move him or herself to the ATM machine, which is actually cannot done through the online. Uh, even worse for the at for the below slide, uh, it's for the company even worse because we have the 
uh, community register paper linked with the uh, ID of the directors or the one who have the signer for the power uh, attorney, which is actually is all paper and I mean everybody suffer about have some kind of the uh, certified true copy and sign with the wet ink. But the, as I said, that's, that's the uh, current uh, situation, which is we have a lot of per current pain. Uh, I just picked just a small, uh, just uh, I, item, not a small, but it's a big uh, issue is on the account opening. The numbers of the new account open today, uh, all bank uh, approximately, I'm, I'm, I'm used the number escalate uh, from uh, my bank account is for the individual is about 10 million, more than 10 million accounts a year. And the cost of the manual to open the account per account for individual is ab about 200 to 300 but this depends on the bank size. Uh, for the corporate uh, open the account or uh, apply for any kind of services which needs or the copy of the paper, the total cost uh, is about 700 to 800 baht a time. So you can uh, multiply the number of new accounts to the total cost of uh, processing, which is what I try to say is that we're talking about billions uh, baht a year lose on nothing. What I try to say is on the productivity lose uh, and we, those kind of the cost is finally is back to the, uh, for the business side, which is at the end of the day, uh, lower down our uh, country com competitiveness. Uh, for the bank, uh, we, for the project, we actually we have to uh, roll on. The first one is on the enrollment uh, stage. The, what, uh, this kind of thing is on the KYC. But uh, in the, Actually, today what we have done is we have uh, face to pay, face to face, and using the judgment of the the one who opened the account. But from this uh, project, we take opportunity to apply other technology like uh, facial recognition uh, to help in terms of the uh, judgment of the people. Uh, this. This one is on the uh, regulatory sandbox uh, led by uh, Bank of Thailand uh, today, and we are in the process of the uh, test run on, on this. After we uh, do the enrollment, so we can, uh, I'm not gonna go through the process, which is actually if if want to understand, I spent about three days to understand this, a lot of uh, words. <laughs> Uh, but conceptually is that the, for the bank, we can be the identity provider. What it mean that other banks, if they want a uh, customer of other bank wants to open an account, they can request the authentication from KBank, for example, and vice versa. But I think that the, the essence is not just only the bank uh, account opening but this one can apply to other industry. What I try to say, uh, for any uh, Thai people want to uh, do, uh, apply for a other kind of service, even the service with the government or the uh, service with other industry, uh, this kind of model can, can be applied. So what I try to say, what we have done is not just uh, bank account opening, but also we also have the capability, which is for banking, we are uh, 
we 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 have confidence uh, for our uh, society in terms of the uh, identity proving on on this. So, uh, in summary, not just only banking industry, but we can do the cars uh, industry to to everybody as well. Uh, we are in the process of working together among all the industry. If I, if I may jump in a little bit, uh, I want to, the audience to go back home and, and, and remember two main uh, objectives of uh, the digital ID platform. <coughs> the first objective that we already discussed is the ability to cross-verify, to, to onboard another person without having to, uh, uh, to go through the face-to-face -face, uh, process of onboarding. But, uh, but to rely on other party, probably more than one source, any party, to confirm that that person is actually that person. That's one uh, key objective. But the other key objective is the ability to get electronic consent. That's very important. Every time when, when you go to a bank or put an account, or uh, when you go to get a, li an, a license from a government agency to, to do anything with the government, you are required to carry a, a lot of papers, copies of your uh, information, uh, informa uh, copies of your papers, information of various, various things to present it to, to get a license. And the, the reason why you have to do that is because there's no means of getting that information from the source. But with this, with this platform, you can, you can get, you can, uh, as a user, you can publish, you can sign an electronic consent to allow the correct source of information to provide that source to the relevant party who required that information for further processing. So the government agency uh, whom you are applying for a license may need other information from other branch of the government. But they, they only know uh, whether, whether you uh, allow them to, to, to uh, transmit the data from one government branch to another only with, through some kind of consent. And we provide that facility on, on the digital ID platform. That solves all the... Uh, uh, Kubus, uh, all the problem with, with, with uh, electronic, uh, uh, all, all the uh, papers that you have to have to uh, Xerox and, and submit every time in, in all, every process. So it's going to be a, a key fundamental change if we, if once we implement this platform. Dr. Anichit, thank you very much. Kun Silawat, you know what, I salute you because the complexities you deal with every day is mind-boggling. Thank you very much for sharing all that. Uh, to the audience, Please, if you have any questions for our panelists, feel free to scan the QR code and give us your questions and we'll answer them at the end. Thank you. Hendrik, onwards to you. So GovTech in itself is actually a very exciting initiative on part of the, the Singaporean government. But increasingly, you've already taken some steps towards enabling digital identity and eKYC in Singapore. So in a way, that's kind of a reference point for what we're trying to achieve here. We'd love to hear from you a little bit about what GovTech is and how Singapore is taking upon itself to embark upon this journey. Sure, thank you for inviting us and for allowing us to share our experience. Uh, I think before I begin, it might be useful to introduce GovTech. So GovTech stands for the Government Technology Agency. Uh, I believe the equivalent here is uh, EGA as well as uh, EDDA. Right, so so GovTech has the, uh, in Singapore, is the, we are the government CIO and we're also responsible for Im implementing uh, the Smart Nation, right, which is basically about leveraging technology to improve the lives of our residents and for our businesses. Uh, before I talk about our journey, I would like to say that I think uh, our outcomes we desire are similar, but I think the solutions we adopt may be different. Right? So uh, if you may, I'll just talk a little bit about what we have done. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so I think for us, we've been quite fortunate to be able to take an evolutionary approach in our uh, identity and digital identity journey. Right? Uh, I, I, we, we actually rely on the fact that 
uh, every resident uh, is issued an identity card. Right? So our citizens are issued identity at birth, and our uh, permanent residents, as well as the work status residents, are issued at upon registration. Right? So uh, we are able to leverage on this identity uh, for the digital purposes. Uh, we issued our first digital identity in 2003. Uh, it was called SingPass, and it is really, a, at that time, a password for people to assess uh, government services. Right? In 2015, it was enabled with uh, two-step verification right, to provide an added layer of security. Uh, in 2016, we rolled out a service called MyInfo, right, which is really the uh, KYC component. Right? It's also the component that provides consent for the sharing of information uh, between the resident uh, uh, and uh, any consuming party. Right, so MyInfo uh, is really a platform uh, that contains certain key information. So there's information uh, that you might find on your ID card, information that you might find uh, on your income tax statement, such as your income, as well as uh, data that's about your social security. Right, so the vision for MyInfo is really we want to move away from transacting by submitting documents, but rather transact by submitting data. Right, by submitting data, uh, it allows uh, the consuming parties, such as the bank or a business, uh, access to machine-readable data instantly, right? allowing instant processing, uh, potentially instant KYC, and potentially straight through provisioning of a product. I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, in the next slide. Um, so you might have heard that we are also on a national digital ID journey. Right? And I think the, the point is that it's really a journey because new use cases, new technologies uh, come up all the time. Right? So we expect that uh, you know, we'll have to deal with different situations as we move forward. So in the second half of this year, we will be rolling out uh, what we call the SingPass Mobile, right? which is basically uh, we want to address a few issues. Right? First, we want to make it digital economy ready. Right? This means that it must be easier to log in. Right, today, you have to remember user ID and password. If you have uh, accounts with different organizations, there are multiple user ID and password. So we like to have one user ID and password. Uh, preferably no password, just user ID. Right? Uh, we would like to leverage on biometrics, for example, right, for better authentication. And we, and we also would like to enable new, new transactions. So for example, uh, we have the Electronic Transaction Act. Right, and we would like to see more digital signing of contracts uh, being made possible. Right, not signing on the glass, right, but signing with certificates that are non-reputable, uh, level of assurance for, right, and there's no doubt that contract uh, is valid. Right, so these are the kind of uh, outcomes we would like to see, and we believe this will allow the economy to move at a faster rate. So a little bit more about uh, KYC. So as I said earlier, the KYC service is called MyInfo. And what you see on the slide is the user journey that the customer uh, will typically experience when he uses MyInfo. Right? So, so he or she, uh, or let's say me, right? if I'd like to open a, a bank account, right? I'll go to the bank's website. That's step one. Right? Uh, I'll choose the product. In this case, it's DBS Multiplier account. Uh, and I'm given a choice to sign up using MyInfo or sign up traditionally. If I choose MyInfo, I'm authenticated by SingPass. I provide the 2FA and I provide consent. Consent is, uh, is um, box number four. Right? It shows the data that's being transferred. And if I click I agree, which is the green button, that data gets transferred to the bank. It appears on the form. I check that, that it's correct. I provide uh, CRS, FATCA information uh, if necessary, and I click Submit. Right, and the transaction is complete. So the account is open with no supporting documents right, and only an authentication and a consent. Right. This service was piloted last year. Uh, it's currently available uh, at the following five banks below across 35 of their products. Uh, we expect the total number of products to hit 60 uh, by, the, uh, half of, by the middle of this year. Right, and um, I think the data we have uh, is quite encouraging. 
right? So uh, in terms of usage, right? We, when we show this option to the bank customers that were in the pilot, 50% will choose to use the mindful service, right? Versus the traditional service. For the 50% that use the service, they reduce, they, they experience an 80% reduction in transaction time, right? And for the banks, because of the better data quality for credit cards, for example, right, they see a 15% increase uh, in uh, product approval rate. So, so that's improved productivity uh, for the bank. Right? So, so the current products that you can uh, apply for with MyInfo include current and savings account, credit card, personal loan, uh, term life insurance, securities account opening, as well as particulars update. So that, that's a high-risk transaction. Thank you very much. I think already, for those who have just joined us, I think already we've heard who, by saying who you are, who you say you are, is increasingly important in the digital economy. And already we've heard that it's a process to get digital identity. It's a journey. No quite right way to do it yet, but I think we're all learning as we, as we go along. So, Edmund, you actually have a very interesting profile in this particular space. We'd love to hear from you. Actually, the audience would, would really benefit. Tell us a bit more about yourself, what projects you're working on right now, and what, what is your son's perspectives on digital identity here in Thailand? Sure. So my first uh, encounter with KYC came when I was a real estate agent. I was putting myself through university in the US, and to make some extra money, I was a real estate agent. I think I picked some bad timing, because as soon as I became a real estate agent, the market crashed, and this was in 2009. So I looked at my skill set, I knew how to file paperwork, I knew how to do KYC, and I went from being a property agent to being a company agent. So in the US, they call this a registered agent. You would set up the company on behalf of the person and then introduce them to a bank so they can get a bank account opened. Um, so I was doing this business for several years, uh, ended up uh, traveling to Southeast Asia and, and moving here full time. I lived in Singapore, I've lived in Thailand and, and in Hong Kong and some other countries. And I was always shocked at how we would go through a KYC process with the client. We would validate their information, go through the really quite difficult process of collecting it, and we pass it off to the bank, and the bank would do the same work that we did a second time. And this kind of stuck with me, and I wondered, why does the bank need to repeat the same work that we did? And it's because it's an issue of trust. The, the bank didn't, didn't trust that the documents were authentic or that this person had actually been screened properly. And so I wrote a white paper in 2013 about the potential to use blockchain technology to solve some of these issues. Um, so since then, we've deployed this in financial institutions, with other corporate secretaries, with fintech companies, with lots of different firms who now run our technology. And this is a customer journey of what it looks like. Basically, what we're trying to do is, is make the KYC process as easy as possible. So we did this. Um, but we realized that the problem was that we created an efficiency for the bank for what's called the RP or the relying party, but we didn't create much efficiency for the user. The user would still have to go through the same process over and over again. We kind of missed that there. But we looked at our technology stack and we thought, okay, what's missing is going directly to the customer. And that's why we created a uh, nonprofit foundation called SelfKey. And the reason that we did this is that we think that uh, self-sovereign digital identity or identity that uh, comes directly from the user and is under their purview and their control is actually the best and safest way to manage identity. Because when you sometimes when you centralize the data, you have a honeypot of data that can get hacked or that can be vulnerable in, in some instances. Um, there are ways to protect it, but uh, if you are designing a system that uh, cannot be hacked, sometimes the way that you can look at it as a decentralized system can be good for that. Right, so uh, you have a notable example in the U.S. Uh, Experian. You know, the U.S. is well known for being a country to really have strong data protection laws and protect their people. But we saw 300 million IDs, uh, identities that were lost, uh, and, and really they're for sale now on the dark web. So when we were designing this self-key system, which would be a system built on blockchain that the user could control, um, we really thought a lot about that Experian use case, and we we designed a system that originates from the user and uh, enables them to sign up for things like banking in a more efficient uh, manner. So this is just my experience building it and, and, and things that I've done. It can be done in different ways. I think there's great work being done in Thailand with the Digital ID Project and run by strong leaders. This is just my experience and, and what we've done. 
Um, so specifically what we've done in the last six months is we've launched this new wallet and we've processed about 200 million USD in transactions and put 150,000 applications through the, through the process. So it's been well tested. Um, we've mostly been using Ethereum as a blockchain layer, but we would really be interested in using the uh, blockchain ID system that, the, uh, that, that was being talked about today. So that's quite an option for the uh, blockchain layer. And I think when you, when you think about these things as modular, it becomes easier to stack and to build things. So I think a quote that I heard earlier was that we have to build the infrastructure and the bottom layer is absolutely right. Uh, that, that's a very important point that was made. And so the, the storage layer is the layer where you actually may store some data on the person. But the important thing is that you would be able to interact with this data without it being the underlying documents themselves because that's what's dangerous. That's what can be stolen. And so if you can manage to use a protocol you could do something like have the Thai system and the Singapore system talk to each other and be interoperable. So this protocol layer and, and this verified claims layer is, is really important. Uh, we're in part of several different groups now that, that are in that layer. One of them is uh, the UN and the ID2020 initiative. We're also part of the Decentralized Identity Foundation. So we're thinking a lot about that. And then we have the self-key layer, which is open source. So we try to make this available to anyone who wants to build on the platform. And then we have our KYC chain layer on top. And then anyone can build, a, to, can build an application on top of this. So we're trying to enable other FinTech players and other companies to, to cooperate with us. So I'll stop there and, and uh, let some other panelists speak. Yeah, if I may add a little bit on this. Um, the infrastructure that we want to, to see for Thailand is, is a platform where people like Edmund and other people uh, who, who have an idea can build on top of it and interconnect with other people and, and, and uh, the market, the user themselves will, uh, will benefit from that, that kind of development because of the free market competition. So whichever technology is most convenient, most advanced, uh, eventually people, uh, user will, will uh, gather around that, that technology and be, be, be use that technology more than the others. And uh, if I also want to compare a little bit uh, with uh, what our approach with, with, for example, Singapore, which is uh, slightly different, as, as you mentioned, is that um, in, I think in Singapore, uh, if we try to map it into our term, the government themselves act as the, the sole IDP, me meaning that uh, my info, right? My info is the, the only agency that act as the, the authority that uh, authenticate and verify pe people. Whereas in, in, in our design, we, we design just the platform so that the, the government themselves, government agency and the, the private sector like, like a, a fintech company or a bank or a, a telecom company can act as a, a, uh, a, a, a party who identify a, a person to the other party. And, and we, we, we just have to make sure that uh, we also allow a situation where uh, uh, you you can trust more than one sources, not just 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 single source for for that information. Because as as you mentioned, that uh, we feel that uh, it is um, uh, it is important to make sure that it is uh, resilient to to any cyber attack, or if uh, something fail, it fail gracefully. Uh, if everything is concentrated on 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 a single thing, then then if it fails, then and uh, uh, then there's no other choice of, of uh, to carry anything forward. And so the underlying uh, principle of this uh, uh, put into the design of the uh, Thai uh, National ID platform, and, and uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we also believe in the distributed uh, system. Uh, to, uh, so the, we are at, at the moment uh, uh, selecting the the implementation and part of the part of the platform will be implementing using blockchain technology, for example. Just want to add this. I just want to say that what I've seen from the Thai national ID system it seems very well designed from a technical perspective. I've read their white paper and and is very well thought through and it's also a great use case for blockchain because you have the distributed system with multiple parties agreeing on on, on what is true. Thank you, gentlemen. Actually, Kendrick, I'd like to pick up on you because 
we've discussed a lot, which appears to be we need collaboration, we need a team, we need visionaries, we need a team, we need to execute, but we need to collaborate. So in your journey in Singapore, could you give us some perspective on how did GovTech work with the industry? Uh, all right, so I think in the interest of time, I'll just focus a little bit more on the stakeholder uh, engagement portion, right? Uh, I mean, given that this is uh, KYC, right, and given that uh, the industries that tend to do KYC are regulated, right, and, uh, I think predominantly the FIs, financial institutions, as well as the telcos, right, uh, I think there's really uh, three groups of people that we need to engage. Right. I think the first are the data owners. Uh, in our case, uh, they tend to be a, uh, several government agencies. Right. Uh, it tends to be the regulators, the central bank or the media development authority, right, as well as the private sector, right, which is really the banks and the SMEs that will uh, offer the MyInfo service in their digital services for our residents and our businesses. Right. So these are the three, really the three important groups. Uh, in terms of the private sector, which is really the ones implementing the service, uh, we've actually realized that uh, even, though, even though we are a small country, even though we only have 200,000 SMEs, it's not possible to engage them one by one. Right? So we've actually launched a developer portal in November last year, which is this screenshot you see on the right. right? And if you scan the QR code, you will reach that portal. What we've done is we've made our API documentation public. Right? We've made our sandbox public as well, right? So anyone, right, can actually find out how to use our API. This allows us to build a strong developer community as well, right, that is able to serve the SMEs and the businesses that need uh, this know-how. Uh, we've so we've taken an approach where uh, the information is freely available, but if you have a good proposal, right, then you can submit it digitally to us as well. Right, so in the last three months, we've had 4,000 uh, visitors to our portal from 200 is interested businesses, and, right, and we've reviewed 30 proposals. Right, so that's potentially 30 new services that we can see uh, this year as well. The regulator has been a very uh, important partner as well because you will realize that uh, when you uh, do something like that and when you try to do digital on, K on KYC, uh, actually uh, the regulations tend to be pre-digital, pre-internet, right? And there could be some impact. So, so it's very important for the regulator to give uh, relief and dispensation. So for the pilot that we did with the banks, uh, the regulator was helpful in that regard. And when it turned out to be successful, right? Actually, in February this year, the regulator has given blanket dispensation for all FIs, right? So if, if any FI in Singapore uses MyInfo for customer onboarding, they do not have to collect any documents and they do not have to collect the photo ID as well. Right? Uh, and they can do this while still complying to the AML and CFT uh, notices. Right? Uh, so, so I think these are the really important people that you know, need to be uh, part of that journey. Thank you very much. Kun Silawat, what's really interesting among this audience is that we have regulators, we have private sector folks, but at the end of the day, they're all people and people are consumers. And what consumers really, really want is that they want it now. So we've seen the process and the journey to get to building that infrastructure and then subsequently enabling it as part of the banking service. So could you give us a sense of the timeline on when this could be available to the market and what would it look like for Thailand? What would it look like for Thai consumers? Okay. Uh, the what we try to finish it within uh, June to July on the... This year? Like, a, yes, the, for the... Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so some kind of the proof of concept and have some... Uh, the, the development should do in uh, two sites. One is on the NDID platform, which is uh, used for the uh, cross-verification uh, to other organization or other cross industry, and the part that for for each party should uh, do in parallel is on the enrollment the EKYC. Uh, for each bank, they, uh, we have the working group that working together how to standardize 
and uh, to ensure the uh, uh, level of con confidence is pretty much the uh, should must be the same actually because if it, uh, because it's got have some kind of the uh, cross uh, authentication in that way. Uh, that's for the involvement, and the other part is on the uh, build the infrastructure within the bank to uh, do the part of the identify uh, identity provider and the lying party because for the bank we can do do both. And after that, uh, other industry will come from the working committee. Uh, we have I think about twelve. Uh, use case, and also in parallel we have another working uh, working group uh, on the national single window as well. That's for the juristic in terms of the common need to do the import and export. That needs some kind of the national uh, digital ID too. Thank you so much. We've reached the end of the session. Thank you very much to our fellow panelists. You have been very kind with sharing your perspectives. If I may summarize for the crowd, I think we've heard today that it's a journey. Digital identity is a journey, and collaboration will get us there. It's clear that we want this now. We want this sooner rather than later, but sounds really easy, right? But not that easy. That's why we have these people here. You know, we're visionaries, we have the builders, we have the executioners, and I think Thailand is in a great place. I'm really looking forward to see what Thailand is going to do about this. Thank you very much. Please give a big round of applause for our panel. Yeah, thank you so much, the panelists. We have a great combination for both player, regulator, government agencies, and private companies. So FinTech comes in the picture because there are pain points in the existing financial services and the EKYC has no exception on this. So in order to achieve the EKYC of identification and verification, we, have the, we, we need the right processes, the right platform and the right technology. And fortunately we have um, national initiatives like the National Digital Identity Platform to go with the EKYC processes. ครับก็จบไปแล้วนะครับสำหรับงานเสวนานะครับในเซสชั่นนี้นะครับที่กล่าวถึงระบบการระบุตัวตนนะครับเดี๋ยว EKYC so we're going to have two more sessions left for this um, Bangkok FinTech Fair 2018. Please come back at um, 3.35. 3.35, thank you. <laughs>